What is going on guys? Today we're hopefully going to be fixing my off-road 240. If you didn't know, the 240 has been down for a little bit. Originally we thought that it was the motor was having an issue because the compression test that we did got super low numbers. So we thought that, okay, well now something happened. This is not good. Before we got any further with it, we decided to do a leak down test. I was very happy to see the results of that. One thing that I knew before we even did the compression test was that this coil pack harness got all messed up. You can see how the wire is like smushed there, like right on the gray one. And right here we have some exposed wire on the red and it's like that for most of the plugs so we're definitely having issues with our coils so i ordered these i'll have a link to these in the description pick them up for yourselves in case you don't want to spend another like 150 bucks on a brand new iron specialties one if you want to fix it yourself this was i would have to double check again but i think that it was like 25 bucks or something it also comes with eight so you'll have two spares but we're gonna go one plug at a time and we're actually going to be extending them slightly so they'll be something like that they'll be like two three inches longer because we were having some issues where it wasn't reaching long enough so but that could have been my fault with the way that i ran the harness so because we tucked everything to where you honestly can't even see the harness when you're looking straight on it made it very difficult to get certain plugs in so we're going to start with number one so first step we're going to take this like braided loom off i actually have some more so we'll be able to replace that and i also have heat shrink and these splice connectors So we got our coil bag number one, just all exposed wire now. So we're gonna match the wires. As you can see, red is gonna be pink, blue is going to be red, gray is going to be brown, and black is going to be black. So we're just gonna splice this into there and we're gonna make it just slightly longer. So we'll probably cut it down about here and then splice it into there. So here's a tip if you're doing this and you want it to look as clean as possible, have them set to different lengths because when you put one of these on, it's fatter than the wire. And if you bunch them all together, it'll look clean and then it'll be a real fat spot and then it'll go back to normal. So if you offset these to where they're at different spots in the loom, it just makes it look a lot cleaner. So we have this one totally done. You can see how each one is offset, so none of them actually come in contact with each other, so the harness can stay relatively thin. Oh no. So I actually messed up because we have this all complete and it looks good and everything, but how do we get this on it? We don't. This is all braided. There isn't a split in it. Basically what that means is this needs to be on first and we need to have it in this back section down here, zip tie it so it stays, take care of all this, and then cut the zip ties and then have it go along the full length. So basically what that means is I have to do this all over again. So this is how you have to have it. You have to zip tie it down here and then pull it back as far as you can to where you still have access to all the wires and then zip tie it there so it stays so then once we cut the zip ties after we're done it'll go the full length and we can heat shrink and zip tie it up front and then it'll look really good Just got the second one done, everything looks good, and this time I did it right. So we have the first three all done. They look pretty good. Right here, I had to put some wire harness tape because I didn't have any heat shrink that was big enough to go over this whole thing. I'll have to do the same thing down here once we get to that point, but I think it came out pretty good. They're all just slightly longer than what they used to be, and they're all labeled temporarily. We'll have some better labels in the future. The first three are all done, so now we can start on four, five, six. So here's the harness. It's all complete. We have six all brand new plugs with nice undamaged wires. I think it came out pretty good. The only thing that I wish I had big enough heat shrink to get this section and this section, just so it looks better. And then it'll also look better once we get the labels. For now, we are ready to throw it on the 240 and then go for a drive. All right, we got the harness back on. Everything's put back together. This is the moment of truth. I'm really nervous. <laughs> Okay, so the car is on right now and it sounds a lot better than it did before. Everything looks good except the AFR. I don't know why sometimes it's reading, sometimes it's not. 
it's really bugging me though. And then the oil pressure, that's, it's the wrong unit of measurement. It's kind of confusing, but essentially it's at 3.7 bar. But our coolant temp's rising, our RPM is good. I mean, this is a cold start, but I don't have a cold start valve, so it's not gonna idle much higher than that. But everything seems good. The belt's still on, the motor. The motor's not really vibrating too much, which is good. Fuel pressure's good. Everything seems good. Once it gets closer to like 150, then we'll do some revs and we'll uh, see how she sounds, if she likes it or not. So she sounds a lot better. However, it is still like kind of stuttering a little bit in low RPM, but that's just when revving. So we're gonna go for a drive right now. We're gonna see how she does. Because we were having that issue where uh, below 3000 RPM, there was like no power at all. It would start to break up and boost around like 5,500 to 6K. So we're gonna see if that coil pack harness was actually our issue or not. up on camera but basically down low the car feels perfect however up top we are still breaking up in boost which is unfortunate so i data logged it and we'll go over it in a second but i sent it over to my tuner chris natural aspirations he's tuned the car twice and he's going to take a look at the data log and he's going to see what's wrong with it but i'd also like to take a moment and just be like admire the cars like i never thought the 240 would look so good never thought i'd own a skyline yeah it's just gtst but i'm a broke boy give me a little slack it's crazy sometimes it's like is this even real because i don't have any fancy screen recording software nor do i know how to use that stuff i'll just show you from the camera right here on this pole we got to 75 39 and our map sensor was reading 200 kpa which is 29 psi which sounds like a lot but you have to subtract atmospheric pressure which is 14.7 so we actually did 14.3 psi at redline which we should be making 17 and a half that pink line there is my afr and it's reading so weird it's reading like super lean and then it starts actually reading but then it goes back to super lean and it's doing that the whole time it's really strange the sensor's brand new and we just fixed the wiring for it so i'm not 100 sure what's going on there but today we made huge progress with the coil pack harness i'm very very happy to have finally had that finished but that is going to be it for this video thank you so much for watching please leave a like if you did comment down below, and then hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.